Hello and welcome to the Ridiculously Good VA Show with Tracy Daviero. If you are a virtual assistant or want to be one, this is the place to learn the tips and tricks you need to become a ridiculously good VA. I've been a part of the VA industry since 1998 and I'm excited to get to know you and help you build an amazing business. Let's go. Hello and welcome to another episode of the podcast that teaches you how to be a ridiculously good virtual assistant. Today we're going to talk about how to use LinkedIn smarter so you can market yourself properly and yes, get clients. Our quote today is from Jill Rowley. LinkedIn is no longer your online resume, it's your digital reputation. And I like this quote because there are so many people that still treat LinkedIn like a resume. And yes, there are lots of people who aren't business owners on there. And so that works for them. But because we are different as VAs, as independent contractors, as business owners, we need to use it differently. And the cool thing is that the people who are looking for us and looking to get support for us, from us, our clients, need to see it differently than a resume as well. So let's get to it using LinkedIn smarter to get VA clients. Where are you looking for your clients? When I ask VAs this, a lot of them tell me that they're looking on social media. Of course, particularly in the last couple of years, we have been pushed onto social media more to find clients than probably we have in the past as we were not really allowed to get together in person. So networking is a big thing. But there are a lot of virtual assistants who have always just looked for clients online and online often means social media. If that's you looking for clients on social media, how's it working for you? When we're trying to grow our business, we have to go to the right places and talk to the right people and say the right things. And that is the same whether we're doing it in person or whether we're doing it online. Um, If you are doing what you think is right, if you're going to what you think are the right places, talking to who you think are the right people and saying what you think are the right things, and it's not working for you, then something needs to change, doesn't it? It probably sounds challenging to say that you need all of those three things to go right or to fit together in order for things to work well for you and for the clients to come in, the business, the connections, all that kind of thing. Um, It probably sounds pretty challenging, but once you figure those three things out, it really is quite a simple equation. It's so important to find out or to to know um, where your people are. And when we talk about working on LinkedIn or working LinkedIn, I should say, um, it is a really smart place to do it. You can spend a lot less time doing your marketing because you know that your people are there. How do you know your people are there? Well, there's 18, 810 million users on LinkedIn and 310 of them are active monthly. How many clients do you need? You don't need 310 million clients, right? You need one at a time. And I can guarantee you that your clients are there. So you want to go to the right places LinkedIn is a very good option for a lot of VAs. You want to talk to the right people. So then you need to find the people who are the ones that you can work with out of that 310 million. It's a little like, you know, looking through a needle in a haystack, but it's because you need to make a few decisions around who it is that you can support best. The best way to get clients is to make sure that you know who you're marketing to and who you can best support based on the experience that you have and the services that you offer. And then being able to say the right things, that's all about messaging. And so once you're there and you know your clients are there and you find them, then it's just about talking to them. So it really is a simple, simple concept, right? And LinkedIn, as we've talked about often, is all business. People are there really just for professional reasons. There, There is community and it's very social as a matter of fact, um, but it's not the same as a lot of other social media platforms because it really is business people. And so I think that that's one important distinction that it has. And when you are looking for new business, you want to go to someplace that is all about business. It just makes sense. The people that are active there, which you can easily see, right? They show you their activity it's so much easier than going to um, you know somebody's Facebook page and scrolling through you don't you can't see what they're commenting on and what they're liking and that type of thing and in LinkedIn it shows you that shows you the the, what they've liked what they've shared what they've commented on and their own post too their activity is actually really um, quite detailed and so it's very interesting you can see what they're using LinkedIn for as you start to connect with people I think that's a very valuable thing and you can see the people 
that you want to work with, whether they're active there or not. If they're not active, then that's not a good place to pursue them. So it's just an interesting kind of thing. But it's a great, great place to make business, good business connections, because the people who are using it for that are the ones that we're going to be going after. And I know that sounds very salesy, but really we do have to pursue people or find them and, you know, introduce us ourselves and have conversations with them in order for them to want to work with us. And so what better place to have, start having those conversations. And it's not even actually about being salesy at the, at the get go. It's about making connections. And I think that that's what LinkedIn really teaches us to do is be there, be present and have some connections with people. You might not be connecting with clients. You might be connecting with potential strategic partners, people who could send you referrals. There are so many different types of people there. You could connect with colleagues over there too and, and help each other out. There's lots of different ways. But when you start having those business conversations, you're going to get better at it. You're going to know exactly what you want to say to people because we're all trying to you know use our time efficiently. And so we don't want to be on any social media for an hour trying to figure out how what to say who to talk to and that type of thing we know pretty early on at least I think the the VAs that I help and and for myself the way I look at it is I know pretty soon into a conversation whether I can help somebody or not because I ask the right questions and if I can't help them then we cut the conversation short and we move on to somebody else and I think that that's the way we need to look at things in terms of efficiency we don't want to waste their time we don't want to waste my time and once you start to do that better then it really does help and it doesn't mean that you just cut somebody off in a conversation but you can take their information and say that's not what I do but boy that's interesting if I find somebody who's offers that service, I'll definitely pass them along to you. So that's still a connection. It's still really valuable. And it's a business conversation that you can get really good at and that you can make sure that, that um, you are growing and getting better at all the time. So what do you need to do um, in, ter in terms of using LinkedIn better? better? You do need to make sure that what you're putting out there is going to work for you. It isn't your online resume anymore. There's so many features that you can use to showcase your services. It's pretty cool if you haven't logged in lately. I've taken a few LinkedIn trainings in the last six months or so, and, and there are lots of different things that I'm still learning how to use over there. I'm certainly not a LinkedIn expert. I just know that it is a really good place for us to be able to showcase our services and to be able to connect with clients because I've gotten clients myself there, and I know a lot of VAs who are also getting a lot of their clients from LinkedIn. So it's not about me being a, a spe, a, uh, an expert here, but me learning along with you and, and sharing the things that I'm learning with you, uh, learning, yes, sharing the things I'm learning with you as well. Definitely is not your online resume. So what you want to do is you want to Make sure that what you're putting out there is going to work for you. You also need to find the people that are going to bring you the business, right? Like I say, that could be potential clients or potential referral sources. And all of these people are connections. So first thing what we want to do is make sure that what you're putting out there is working for you. And um, here's what you need to do. So uh, I think I have a couple of points here. So um, number one, you want to optimize your profile. It's really important. The search bar is something that anytime anybody's talking to you about LinkedIn and telling you how to find people or how to connect with people or find groups or events or anything like that, they're telling people to use the search bar. And when you put your stuff into your profile, you want to put things into your profile that are searchable, right? That people are going to search on. That includes, you know, the things that you do, the services that you offer, maybe the people that you work with if you if you're a fitness coach supporter or health health and wellness um you know service professional if those are your clients you want to put that kind of thing in there you want to talk about the systems and the the platforms that you use because when people are looking for something we're not we're never sure exactly what they're going to type in and so we want to make sure that we're putting all of those things in keywords or search terms and and technically they're keywords but that's what i always recommend is just think about it in terms of a search term what are people looking for because that's what they will type into that search bar at the top of the page but also that's going to be what LinkedIn starts to show them right it's going to show them relevant things that uh, that if you are somebody who can support them or somebody that could be interesting to them when you're really focusing on optimizing what you're putting out there then you're going to be sort of higher in the queue right 
And there's, like I said, there's lots of neat new things on your profile page that can showcase your services. Um, there you can put in hashtags, you can put in, you can build a service page. You can, obviously your headline is huge. There's a cover image that you can use now. There's a featured section where you can put all kinds of things in um, about uh, what you do and you can put links to, you can put you know, images and links and that type of thing to your free offers or to your consultation page or to your link tree, if that's what you want to do, all of the kinds of things that whatever it is that you want people to see, you can actually feature. So instead of, you know, like a blog where we're piling things up in, in chronologically, uh, if somebody has to actually search them or look for them, in LinkedIn, we can actually put them right at the top of our page in our features section, and we know that that's what people will be looking for. And really, you know, that's one of the things that I always do and I tell you guys to do all the time is when you start to connect with people, check them out, right? Google them, find out where they are. LinkedIn profiles will come up in Google searches when you punch in somebody's name, just like they will for you. If somebody punches in, you know, your keywords, maybe they're not going to search for your name all the time, but if they search for the keywords that you have on your website and um, uh, the skills that you have or the services that you offer and your business is going to come up because you're doing such a good job of your opt optimization there, your LinkedIn will come up as well. So the more things that you have that have those, those search terms and those keywords in them, those are going to be the results that, that, you know, the Google and that type of thing will pull up for you. So, um, yeah. And by optimizing what you're putting out there, you show people what you want them to see. So you want them to see your best stuff, right? And that's what we put into our feed features section. Number two is make your profile work for you. And I've talked about a few of the things that you can have on it already. But um, in terms of your about section, you want to, that's every time all of us set up our LinkedIn originally, which I don't even remember how long ago I set up mine, it was like a resume. That's what it was. And because that was at the time, you know, if you're in a corporate job, that's kind of what we used it for. It was a business profile, I guess. And so what you want to do as an independent contractor and as a VA business owner is you want to make sure that you are um, using that about to read more like a website. And it doesn't have to be, I think you actually get a ton of characters in it too. Like it doesn't have to be super short, but you want it to look um, you want it to look, to, to talk about your clients, right? To talk about who your clients are, what you help them with, why that's important for them and all of the things, put a call to action in there. So you want to make sure that it reads exactly like a web page, and you can then, when people come to look at you and they click on your about, they can read and they can self-identify and they can say, oh yes, I am a financial planner and I do need help with XYZ and I, oh, you do use this particular platform. You, you use this e-commerce solution or you are, you know how to use, or you're familiar with, or you have experience with this course platform, whatever it is. These are the things that people want to know. And as they're doing their little bit of uh, research and that type of thing, you want the information that you want them to know about you in there, right? It's really important. And you want to fill up that featured section, of course, with all the things that that you can potentially put in there. And remember that your photo and your headline travel with you everywhere. So make sure that your headline talks about what it is, who it is that you help. And you can put a title in there and that if your title makes sense, virtual assistant, it, lots of people search that term. I search it all the time myself. And so but not just virtual assistant, put your idea, put your target client in there, your ideal client, the name of their, their, um, industry or the name of their title, right? What their headline would be, or, and also use those details in there, use those characters in there to describe who you help and how you help them. These are things that will follow you every time you make a comment on somebody's, um, or, or like, or anything like that, like comment or share, that's going with you. When somebody clicks on your name or when they see your name, they will always see your, your photo and your headline. So make sure that you're using those appropriately as well. And like I say, detail the services you offer, and then you're going to start looking for your ideal clients. When you're, you don't want just to wait for people to connect with you and search with you. That We've done that part. We've put in that information where people who are searching for a virtual assistant or support in some way or another, they should be able to find you, right? They should start to come up with you. And the more connections you make, obviously, the higher you'll come up. I know that whenever I search terms, um, I know sometimes I get thousands of results. So it's not just all of a sudden, if you put your your stuff in there, that you're going to you know be making it to the top of things. But again, LinkedIn is going to be somewhat curious, and it's going to 
find your first connections and it's going to find your second connections. So it will list them in the order. If you have a lot of people that you're connected to, similar people or um, mutual connections, I think they're called, then you're going to start coming up and being recommended to other people as well. So it is really important to make those kinds of of connections. But you're, for yourself, you're going to use the search bar in the same way that I just described to find your ideal clients. You're going to search their occupation, their job title, their location, maybe services they use. I did a little bit of this as I was doing some research for this particular um, podcast episode. And not it, it doesn't always work when you punch in something like Kajabi or, um, you know, Infusionsoft or something like that. But sometimes you can get lucky. It's more it's more the service providers who are coming up for those. But try them. You know, if you're looking for somebody, if you want course creators who are using um, uh Kajabi or uh, uh, Teachable or something like that, put those things in and see if that particular market has started using those things in their uh, about section and, and all that type of thing as well. So, so use whatever kinds of search terms that you can think of and really start to look at who it is that's out there and then um, obviously look at other VAs too I don't think there's anything wrong with with uh, modeling and comparing and and using the leverage especially like I say of the one two and three connections in LinkedIn I think it's excellent to be able to go to another VA say who is providing similar services to you and see who they're connected to and see who they're liking and sharing and commenting and that kind of thing as well and and not not to copy what they're doing, but that's exactly what we're looking to do. And that's how LinkedIn shows us, you know, they're connected to these people and you can start to look to see where the connections are laying. And then once you start to do that type of thing, once you search your original term, there are drop down boxes at the top of the page in your search and they filter and choose second connections. You just click on it that you can go, it'll, it'll have three check boxes, one, two, three, choose second, because that means that you're not connected to these people yet, but they're close enough because that means you have a mutual connection, right? And so when you're looking to make a new connection, always try to start with a second, at least I do. That's always been my theory is that we have something in common because there, we have a, a common connection. And so you can always start with that, but also don't forget to look at your first connections. If you've done a lot of connections, on um, LinkedIn like I have for many, many years. I've been on it for a very long time. Sometimes there are relationships that you haven't leveraged there yet. So sometimes it's not about making brand new connections, but it's about fostering existing relationships or revisiting an old relationship. If you connected with a lot of different people, I know we, you know, I go through phases or, or VAs that I work with go through phases where they connect with a bunch of people in a market that they want to serve or support or work with and then don't you know don't keep up with their LinkedIn or something like that so you may already have a lot of connections with the type of people that you want to actually work with or build those relationships with and don't forget too about strategic partners it's always important you're either going to look for someone who you can work with or somebody who knows people that you can work with right those are the strategic partners search them as well and look at what they're doing and and whose stuff they're sharing right building a partner relationship is often easier than trying to build a lot of potential client relationships because there's no selling involved there. It's just sort of mutual referrals and that type of thing. And then the last thing you want to be able to search is um, search events to see if there's anything that you may attend. Sometimes you have to pay for those. Sometimes they're, you know, limited to groups and that kind of thing. But a lot of people do put up uh, events on LinkedIn and that's a really great place to network with people. If you are finding something like I say for the platforms that you're using and the services you're using, sometimes if you get into a group of people who are using those particular services, then there are events there that you can attend and you can stand out because you are um, the expert using that particular service. Now, after you find some people that you do want to start to connect with, start a tracking sheet. That's, I think it's important. We want to make sure that we're, we're looking for efficiency, right? We're not just looking for hours and hours and hours of searching and, and checking and all that kind of thing. Um, but we also want to see um, you know, we want to be able to follow up with these people. And so you start a tracking sheet and then start to look and well, actually 
before you put them on the tracking sheet, check to see if they're active. And if so, what is their activity? Like I said a little earlier, LinkedIn is very good at showing you all of someone's activity, which I love. I like my own activity log on Facebook, and I think it's the same type of thing for LinkedIn, but we can see it for other people. And so make sure that they are active, right? Not just what they're posting, but typically what um, you want to like, share, and comment on, but also what they're liking, sharing, and commenting on too, because you want to see how they're using LinkedIn, right? See who else they're connected to, and would those people potentially be good connections for you as well? It's so nice to be able to click on someone's connections and go through and be able to sort of expand that search a little bit deeper. I just think it's really um, it's a really handy, handy tool for sure. And again, we're looking for quality over quantity. We're not looking to connect with 50 people at once. We want to get a system that's going to work for us. We want to get, um, you know, really clear on who it is that we can help. And you're just looking for one client at a time. You're not looking for 100. You're not looking for 310 million. You're looking for the people that are ideal for you. And by doing that, you're going to need far fewer connections than you actually think you are. It's not going to take you hours and hours every week to go through your LinkedIn once you get that process. And so once you see the people that you want to connect with and you know that they are using LinkedIn and they're active and they seem to be, you know, people that you can build those relationships, that's when you put them onto their tracking, onto your tracking tracking sheet. And you just want to keep an eye on who it is you are um, connecting with and what the status of, of your relationship is, right? Because they're not always going to jump right to a sales conversation or a discovery call or even a DM. You're going to want to warm up that relationship first. And so when you start to like and comment and share their posts, by the time you do an introduction or even a connection request, um, you're going to be familiar to them. I know I see it all the time when people start to like, comment and share on my stuff and then they pop in and they send me a nice note whenever I'm, con you know, when they want to connect with me, I know that they've done a little bit of homework and they know what I do. There's nothing worse than somebody clicking on, you know, my connection or to connect with me and saying, you know, I'm looking for a VA. Uh, can we talk about your services? And that just means to me that they haven't read my LinkedIn profile at all. And that is frustrating to me. It's not a connection that I really want to make. I want to make sure that that people are actually reading and seeing what I do. And when they know that I'm a coach and trainer, if they reach out to me about coaching and training, I know that they've at least done some preliminary legwork, which is what you want to do before you reach out to people too. It just makes the whole relationship part easier. And as I say, we're using LinkedIn smarter, right? That's what we're trying to do. Um, and then, yeah, you don't want to just like two of their posts and then send them an, an email introduction. You, it doesn't have to take a ridiculous amount of time. You don't have to like and comment and share on their on their stuff for six months. But, you know, you could do it consistently and make sure that you're making thoughtful comments, not like great or awesome article or anything like that. Like pick out things and actually really start an online conversation and start that conversation, like I say for everybody, in the comment section. Don't just jump to DM. You don't do it in Facebook or you shouldn't. You do it, you know, Instagram. Instagram is, is wonderful for it because a lot of people, they do post their comments right there and you want to be able to showcase yourself and your knowledge and your expertise, but you also want to share your personality and, you know, your um, community sort of aspect and doing that in the comments is where everybody else can see it too. And they'll say, oh my goodness, this person is really interesting and interested in what is happening on this particular profile. So that's what you want to do. And then next, of course, you have to post relevant content of your own. What are your services? We have to think about what it is that you do for your clients. And that's what you want to post. You don't want to post that you have an opening um, next month and you're looking for clients. You don't want to post that these are the services you offer if you're interested get in touch with me, go deeper than that. You want to talk about how you help your clients. What by, by helping them with their email, um, campaign, what does that help the client do? We want to go deeper and say, what does it help them do? And I, I do what's called a features and benefits exercise with a lot of my clients in different groups that I do. And it's really eye opening. It was one of the hardest exercises that I did when I was sort of, I, figuring out my VA services and that type of thing. And, but it, it really makes a lot of sense because you're focusing on what the benefit is to the client. And that's the stuff that you want to put into your posts, everything that you're going to put out there. You want to make sure that the client is seeing it and saying, oh, I didn't even know that I needed help with my email, but that sounds really good. It sounds like if I'm, you know, more professional and I'm connecting with people more and you can quote statistics about how, you know, email marketing is still working for people, whatever it is, whatever your expertise is. I don't want to 
to get off on a tangent about email marketing, but whatever your expertise is, learn about why it's important, the value uh, that you're bringing to the client and what benefits the client gets from it. And those are the things that you want to talk about, right? You want to talk about what you do and how it helps them in their business. Your profile and your actual activity are really important as well. Um, you can post three times a week, but it should be good content. You don't have to post 10 times a day. You don't have to post tons of different content. You don't have to do video if you don't want to do video. You do what works for you, but whatever showcases you is the most important thing. And so uh, you're looking for quality over quantity for your content too, not just for the people that you're connecting with. And LinkedIn will actually show your post to more people when you get interaction on them. Of course, that's what we're looking for all the time, right? So make sure that you're thoughtfully posting. As I say, you're going to post your own stuff looking for interaction. So ask questions, right? Ask people, agree or disagree? How does this work? What do you think of this? These are the things that you can invite some comments or feedback or interaction on. And you're going to do the same thing on other people's posts. So and LinkedIn actually counts those interactions. This is something that I learned recently in a LinkedIn training that I took. LinkedIn actually counts your interactions as your activity too. Um, so you can see from other people's activity level. So by stepping that up yourself and making sure that you are commenting and doing that type of thing for other people and encouraging them to do that for you, instead of just posting a quote, I, I end with a question, right? Always end with a question. It will usually um, spur more people to actually answer the question at the end of it or start with the question however it works and um, but that's the the LinkedIn algorithm will see that and see that that's activity tied to your name and so they will automatically start to show your stuff to more people it's pretty cool without having to create 20 pieces of content every week you just have to go and comment on other people's stuff and it counts as well so that's pretty neat at least I thought that was a really interesting thing that I learned so in terms of posting um, I also learned something interesting that you uh, a lot of activity is before the day starts uh, during the lunch hour and after work so LinkedIn is something that people are not staying on throughout the day, like Facebook or Instagram or TikTok or anything like that, but they're actually checking it as part of their business. And so that's, I don't have any statistics on that, but I thought that was an interesting thing that if you can, if you can be there and show up at those times, 15 minutes, you know, before you start your day, uh, 15 minutes at lunch and 15 minutes at the end of your day, that is pretty easy to do. And it, especially if you're focusing on just one platform to do your networking and do your connecting and that platform is LinkedIn, that's pretty simple to be able to hop on and, and be there. And, and what you want to do is, is be there and interact as well. Um, on TikTok, if you uh, follow TikTok at all, one of the things that is important is when the creator posts that they are there to jump on for the first people that it's a big thing to say, I'm first, I'm first, I'm making the first comment. And they're there conversing with their audience. They're really building community over there. And it's, it's quite impressive actually to see how it goes. They don't stay online forever, but when they post something, they're posting it live. It's not using a scheduler or anything like that. They're posting it live and they're staying on to, to have a conversation with the people who are there checking them out right away. LinkedIn's a little bit different because we do consult it through the day. It's not as, you know, in the minute as TikTok is, but it's the same concept, right? You want to, you don't just want to schedule posts and never go there. You want to know when your post is published that people will see it and comment on it right away. And if you don't miss that activity, you may actually miss the opportunity for somebody who's looking for support right then. So you want to, you know, as much as you can do like that's for me, that's what I've started doing schedule at the beginning of the day and the middle of the day and the end of the day, I can easily check in at those times so that I can see whether people are making comments and that kind of thing. And I'm making it a, a process. I think it's very interesting. So um, yeah, it's about the numbers, but it's really more about the commitment. So if you can book in that time and you don't, you don't even have to do it every single day. That's it. You can do three times a week, which is not hard. We all have that kind of time. And you think about it, you're committing to growing your business by doing this. This is a tactic. This is a strategy. This is a plan. And so when you're committing to doing that, committing to something that's only going to take you three days a week because you're putting some thought into it and you're doing it um, effectively, you're doing it smarter, you're using your LinkedIn smarter. I think that that um, developing that kind of a habit 
is it sounds really good to me. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. So, so if you want my help to figure out how to maximize your LinkedIn strategy or your messaging or to choose your ideal client, whatever it is that you need to help give yourself a boost and get going, definitely reach out to me at Tracy at yourvamentor.com. I've helped hundreds of VAs through their challenges and gotten them on their way to the next thing they need to do. I'd love to do the same thing for you. I do private coaching and my new mastermind, the virtual circle registration is open now and maybe one of the options that I have is right for you. That's all I've got for you this week. Thanks for tuning in to learn how to become a ridiculously good virtual assistant. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Ridiculously Good VA Show. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss a thing. For more great resources for your VA business, visit my website at yourvamentor.com. I'll see you back here next time.